The new Insta360 Ace Pro 2 offers the highest resolution and the highest bitrate of any action camera currently on the market. So what memory card are you going to need in order to take advantage of that? Well, let's find out. So you finally have your Ace Pro 2 and you're excited to check out the 8K resolution and see what kind of image quality the 180 megabit per second bitrate can give you. So the next thing you have to decide is what memory cards are you going to need in order to do that? And that's what we're going to focus on today. We're going to take a look at some of the specifications you need to look for, and we're also going to test some of the most popular cards out there to see if they work, which one is the best, or if there's any difference at all between them. So there's a lot to cover, so as usual I'll place the chapters up here and on the video timeline, but before we get into it, the usual disclaimer, this video is not sponsored, paid for, or influenced in any way. I purchased all of the equipment and all of the memory cards with my own money, and the opinions are entirely my own. And of course, if you enjoy our video today, please remember to give us a like, and consider subscribing to the channel for a lot more similar content. So let's get on with it. In order to get the best results out of your Ace Pro 2, there are a few memory card specifications that you need to be looking for. The first of these is the video write speed. Now, when you look at the specifications of a memory card, there are so many different specifications and numbers, it can be quite confusing and in some cases even misleading. But fortunately, there is one key specification that helps us out here, and that is the V number, which is the video speed number. Now, currently, there are just five categories of video speed. There's V6, V10, V30, V60, and V90. Now, this number indicates the minimum sequential write speed that the card is guaranteed to maintain and it's stated in megabytes per second. So if you have a memory card with a V10 rating, that card is guaranteed to provide a sequential write speed of never less than 10 megabytes per second. So what video write speed do you need for your Ace Pro 2? Well, in order to know that, you need to know the camera's bitrate, which is the amount of data stored for each second of video it records. Now, in the case of the Ace Pro 2, the maximum specified bitrate is 180 megabits per second. Now, keep in mind, this is the maximum specification. That does not mean that it uses 180 megabits per second in all modes, and we'll see some examples of the actual bit rates later on. Now, one important note here, the bitrate is stated in megabits per second with a small b, whereas the video speed, the V number that we talked about a moment ago, is measured in megabytes per second. Luckily, the conversion is pretty straightforward. If you recall, one byte is equal to eight bits, so converting from one to the other is simply a case of either dividing or multiplying by eight. And if we do the math for the Ace Pro 2, 180 megabits per second works out to between 22 and 23 megabytes per second. So clearly for the Ace Pro 2, a V10 card is not going to be sufficient, and you're going to have to move up to at least the next level of V30 card. Now you may be thinking that 23 megabytes per second is getting pretty close to that 30 megabyte per second rating, so why not just go ahead and use a V60 or even a V90 card just to be safe? Well, there are good reasons for that, and we'll get into those later on, but for the purpose of our testing, we're going to be looking at V30 cards, and we're going to see how they cope with the most demanding recording modes of the Ace Pro 2. Another specification that you might want to look for in a memory card is the read speed. Now basically this is how fast you're going to be able to get the data that's on the card onto your computer or whatever device you are using. Now typically read speeds are a little bit higher than the write speed. And for the type of cards we've been discussing, V30 cards, you'll probably find most of them are in the 100 to almost 200 megabyte per second range. 
And of course, this can make a big difference in the amount of time you have to wait to transfer your files, particularly if you've been recording a lot of video. Now, one important point here is that in order to take full advantage of the read speed of your memory card, you need to use a card reader which can support that speed. If you are transferring files directly from your camera, typically you're going to see slower read speeds and that's something we'll test for later on. So what capacity of memory card are you going to need for your Ace Pro 2? Well, of course, that depends on what recording modes you plan on using. Now, the most demanding recording mode is, of course, 8K at 30 frames per second. Although, even in this mode, the camera apparently does not use the full 180 megabits per second that it's capable of. In my testing at 8K 30 frames per second, I was recording at about 160 megabits per second which is actually 10 megabits per second lower than I tested on the original Ace Pro at 8K 24 frames per second. And if you do the math, that works out to about 1.2 gigabytes per minute of recording. So if you're recording 8K 30 and you have a 64 gigabyte card, you're going to get less than one hour of recording time. If you have a 128 gigabyte card, less than two hours and so on. Although do keep in mind that when you have formatted a memory card, the amount of space available on that card is always slightly less than what is written on the label. Now, all other modes will record in lower bit rates than 8K. For example, if you're recording in 4K at 120 frames per second, the bit rate is 140 megabits per second. If you record in 4K 60 frames per second, it will record at a bit rate of 130 megabits per second, and that is regardless of whether you're doing standard video, pure video, or free frame video. And if you are recording at 4K 30 frames per second, the bit rate will be 105 megabits per second. And again, let's convert that into gigabytes per minute of recording and then see how much recording time we can get depending on the capacity of the card. Now, I'm not here to advocate for any particular brand of memory card, but when it comes to memory cards, this is one product you don't want to go cheap on. I highly recommend you go with a known and established memory card brand. These products are the result of extensive research, they are produced in optimized manufacturing environments, and these companies have stringent and externally accredited quality assurance system to give you a product that you can rely on. If you think of the consequences of going with some cheap off-brand, you could easily end up losing your entire vacation videos or your YouTube project videos, whatever the case may be. It's just not worth the risk. Of course, you can experience problems even with some of these known brands, but the probability is going to be much lower. And also, it's important where you buy your memory cards. There is a significant knockoff market for memory cards, and if you find a deal on eBay or Amazon Marketplace for a popular memory card which seems too good to be true, it is too good to be true. So here is my list of cards that we're going to be testing today. I've included the claimed read and write speeds, the current street price for the 256 gigabyte version, and I've also provided a direct link if you are interested in checking it out further. So for my write test, the first thing I did was figure out which are the most demanding modes on the Ace Pro 2, which as you saw in the previous section was the 8K30, which has a bitrate of 160 megabits per second. So that was the main focus of my testing, but I did also test out all the other modes on each of the cards. When testing each of the cards, I ran three 10 minute runs at all of the modes and settings, First of all, to see if there were any issues with running that particular mode, but also I wanted to see the final file size to check that all of the cards were running at the same bitrate. And the good news is that all cards performed flawlessly without any issues, and in all of the different modes I tested, all of the cards provided almost identical file sizes. 
Here you can see the results from the 8K test, and as you can see, all cards produced identical results, verifying the 160 megabit per second bitrate. Now I'll spare you all the tables with the other results because as I said earlier, all cards performed flawlessly, producing file sizes that were pretty much identical. So summing up the results of our write tests, basically all cards are capable of handling all the recording modes of the Ace Pro 2 up to and including the most demanding mode which is 8K 30 frames per second. Okay, so let's take a look at the read test results. Now, first off, I have to say that all cards tested slightly slower than their claimed performance. In the case of the Kingston card, considerably lower, but I also should point out that in the case of the SanDisk, the test result was probably a limitation of my card reader more so than of the card itself. But even with that limitation, the SanDisk came out on top, getting to almost 170 megabytes per second, with the PNY being the slowest at under 100 megabytes per second. Now, all of these results were achieved by placing the card into a high-speed card reader. I use this particular one from Lexar, but if you typically prefer to just plug your camera into your computer and transfer the files that way, when I tested the Ace Pro 2, the best I got out of it was just over 80 megabytes per second, so you're going to be limited to that number. Now, even though all of our V30 memory cards performed flawlessly during our tests, one of the things you might be thinking is, well, why not just get a V60 or V90 card and that will guarantee me the best performance? Well, it may not be quite that simple and it has to do with the bus type that is used by the camera. Now, V30 cards use a bus type called UHS-1, whereas V60 and V90 cards use a UHS-2 or UHS-3 bus type. Now, with all previous models, Insta360 has warned against using UHS-2 or UHS-3 cards, but with the Ace Pro 2, they have actually changed that wording slightly, but they are still advising using a UHS-1 card, so I'm assuming that the Ace Pro 2 also uses a UHS-1 bus. And while UHS-2 and 3 are backwards compatible, there is no benefit to using a faster card in a UHS-1 camera, and in many cases you may actually experience issues when you do so. When I set out to do these tests on the Ace Pro 2, of course I assumed it was going to be more challenging than with the original Ace Pro. But as you saw, the maximum bitrate that I recorded on the Ace Pro 2, 160 megabits per second, was actually lower than what I got on the original Ace Pro, which was 170 megabits per second. So, just as we saw on the original Ace Pro, all of these memory cards were able to handle everything that the Ace Pro 2 was able to throw at them, up to and including 8K at 30 frames per second or 4K at 120 frames per second and so on. So that wraps it up for another video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, got good information out of it, please remember to give us a like and also consider subscribing to the channel for a lot more similar content. If you have any questions, any comments, suggestions for future videos, please drop those into the comments section. Otherwise, thank you again for watching.